Hi, thanks very much for joining me for Marketing Monday. Today is Monday, June 13th, and I'm glad you're joining me for this very different version of Marketing Monday. Now, I've switched things up a little bit. As you can see, I've got a different environment. That's for a really good reason, but I've also switched up my normal coffee for an iced tea because why not? It's summertime. Today, I want to talk briefly about one of the the statements that I hear from people pretty regularly. And I want to be um, a little bit more transparent and a little bit clear about, you know, why this is important and how I deal with it. And that is the idea of being, uh, being creative. And, you know, I hear it all the time from clients or prospective clients, and they'll say something like, uh, I, I need your help. I'm just not creative. I don't know how you do it. How can I do it? And I'll tell you, it's maybe not as hard as you think it is. Hi, Paul. Thanks for your comments. Nice to see you here. So I want to talk a little bit about how you can be creative in your marketing, absolutely, but also in your practice development and how I do it. And I think that, you know, um, gosh, everything that we see and experience can be stimulus for creating new insights and innovations. It's everywhere around us. It's in art, it's in products, it's in games and music and sounds and aromas and textures. All of these things affect the way we think and the way we respond to things. And I think that it's important to remember too that creative environmental factors are not just limited to offices or meeting rooms, which is where most of us are trying to be creative, um, which is why I'm here today on my terrace, um, not just to prove a point and of course enjoy the good view, but because this view helps me to be more creative and productive. I'm on a warm marble floored terrace looking out over ancient rooftops here in Normandy. I've got a big garden umbrella over my head. I'm surrounded by fragrant flowers and plants. And there's a lemon tree right here with dozens and dozens of blooms. It smells incredible. There's uh, a eucalyptus tree right next to it. it. Smells really good. I've got lots of pretty colors, buzzy bees. There are chickens in the background that you'll hear from time to time. It's a nice environment and that helps me to be more creative and therefore do a better job for my clients. But, you know, I think it's true probably for everybody. I think environment has a significant impact on our productivity, our morale, our ability to be collaborative. Um, I mean, would you rather honestly work in like a drab warehouse basement or in an office with a view of the ocean and palm trees or here with me in Normandy with a view of ancient architecture? I mean, that might be taking it to an extreme for trying to create and encourage productivity, but I think most of us would at least prefer to work in a workspace that has a window with a view, you know? But there are, of course, some people who really truly can be creative anywhere. Um, but then of course, there are those of us who struggle with creativity. And that's what I wanna talk about today is how to get you off the struggle bus and on to the road to success. So I think given the right encouragement and lots of studies will back me up on this, I think that anybody can be effectively creative given the right encouragement and the right conditions. And I know that this is kind of a, I don't know, a nature versus nurture debate. Um, but I think that in reality, it's a combination of the two. Um, the right environment will always help stimulate a creative thought and collaboration, and that can lead to tremendous breakthroughs. You've probably seen those things happen in your mediation and arbitration rooms, right? You, you probably know firsthand what, that, what an environment can, can do for our clients. And there are lots of studies, of course, that document the impact of environmental factors on health and well-being. So it just sort of makes sense to me. But when we really need to be creative and produce some effective, efficient marketing ideas or practice development ideas, we need to be, I think, increasingly mindful of the role that our environment plays in that creativity and that productivity. And I think that, um, you know, people who are 
relaxed, comfortable, uh, positively stimulated. I think that we can all agree that those people are just known to possibly be more creative or innovative. From time to time, you'll hear from an artist that says, oh, I, I couldn't have written that song without that heartbreak, or I couldn't have produced that painting without the grief, um, or I couldn't have developed that PowerPoint slide deck without the overwhelming stress of an impending deadline hanging over me. And I think from time to time, those kinds of stressors, that, that kind of duress can lead to creativity, including, you know, substance abuse. But I think that those are the rarer cases. Most of us need a mix of the right space, the right conditions, the right stimuli, the right light, um, the right colors. All of those things, I think, are a much healthier version of stimuli for us to be creative and productive. And I think that um, to a lot of creative people need to be not just psychologically comfortable, but but physically comfortable as well. We need to be able to allow our minds to relax, to stretch. Um, gosh, what comes to mind are, for example, the corporate headquarters of Google or Facebook. And you've maybe seen those images and they have ping pong tables. They've got nutritional snacks readily available for their, their work staff. They've got group workspaces. They have little individual pods where you can go and, and they're sort of these um, um, deprivation chambers. So you have total silence, right? They offer outdoor workspaces or unconventional seating like bean bags or pillows. They have lots of different ways to help their, their folks be creative. And you don't have to go that far, of course, but those kinds of things are maybe worth thinking about. Maybe you have a terrace you can take advantage of. Maybe you have a, a coffee shop that will let you, you know, in exchange for, you know, buying a, a coffee or a tea and a pastry, um, use their Wi-Fi for a few minutes. Maybe it's instead of using your computer, you use pen to paper. You know, we can all of us think about a way that we can change the way that we're approaching something in maybe small ways to get a really big result. Um, I think two color is important. Colorful spaces can make us feel more childlike, more, I don't know, playful even, more adventurous. And these kinds of moods are conducive to new ways of thinking. Colors that create visual interest also have been known to reduce fatigue. So when you're trying to be creative, you're trying to be productive, you're trying to think of you know, uh, a new way to present your practice. You're trying to think about a new service that you can offer clients. When you're trying to, you know, think with a critical um, eye on your website content or uh, your client intake forms, all of those kinds of things, I think color can play a critical role in that. Um, and, and I, you know, I think that a lot of us have created work spaces intentionally that are very neutral by design for our clients and parties. But when we're working on ourselves, for ourselves, it's good to mix that up and find a, a more stimulating environment, perhaps. Change the layout of the land, right? And I think, too, that light is important. And I don't mean bright lamps, although, you know, interior lighting, I think, is key. But don't deprive yourself of getting outside and letting the sunshine, you know, hit your face for a few minutes. Looking up, appreciate the clouds, you know, watch the birds go by. It sounds a bit touchy-feely, but having that natural light, having that interaction um, does, I think, reduce our levels of negative stress. Not all kinds of stress are negative, but it reduces the negative stress. It's good for a body. Don't do it so much that you sunburn yourself or damage yourself or, or hurt yourself. I don't want that to be the, the case. But take, you know, little breaks, step outside, breathe some air, look up, appreciate the blue sky and the green trees. Stop and smell the roses, as the cliche goes. And then two, I think that, I think that we all just assume maybe that we can do some of these things and be creative. And I want to stress that Creativity is a skill. Hi, Vesco. Nice to have you join. 
I think too that being creative, it's a skill that we have to work on. It's something that we have to practice. And so from time to time, when somebody says, oh gosh, that was so easy for you, Natalie, or how did you come up with that idea? Or you're so creative. Well, this is something that I do all day, every day and have done for two and a half decades. This is, this is my metier. This is my wheelhouse, but it could be yours too. It does just take practice. It does take diligence. It, you know, you do have to work at it. You know, marketing or rather mastering any skill set. You may have heard the, you know, the idea that it takes 10,000 hours to be the master of, you know, anything that you your desire. Um, and that is possibly true. But a lot of us have racked up those hours without really being aware and really counting them. Um, so you're probably not giving yourself enough credit. But I think that like everything we do in life, mediating, uh, playing sports, playing music, writing, I mean, on and on and on, creating a new service or creating a new way to offer an old service. Um, you know, just, you have to decide whether or not you're going to take advantage of a new opportunity or you're going to design one for yourself. Um, you need to create posts for your social media or the little advert, you know, for maybe um, sponsoring a, an event. You've got to put print ads together for, you know, a local periodical, whatever it is that you're trying to create, being good at it does just take practice. And so, you know, maybe you need to give yourself a break and understand you're really creative in the mediation room. And you just translate that creativity over into practice development or marketing. Maybe you're really creative in the, in the kitchen. Maybe you're a really good cook. Um, gosh, maybe you are the, the artsy craftsy type. Maybe you're creative as a writer. Maybe you're creative as a gardener. Maybe you're creative as a sculptor or as, with interior design. I mean, there are so many ways that humans express themselves. Maybe you're not giving yourself enough credit for being creative and you just need to transfer that sensibility over to practice development and marketing. So get yourself in the right environment. Maybe use exercise. Um, maybe a, a little self-awareness check. You'll, you'll, you'll discover that you tend to be more creative in the morning or you're more creative right after lunch or you're more creative in the evening. You know, figure out when you are um, naturally more creative. You could you could inspire that that creativity in yourself by you know listening to podcasts by reading books i think um austin cleon has a great book it's called steal like an artist and it's very prescient for mediators so even though it's about artists i think you might really enjoy it grab one over on the amazon it's a good choice um but get inspired you know, maybe look at what other service professionals are doing in their business. Look at how they promote themselves on social media or in print media. You know, pay attention to not only what it is they do for themselves that is inspiring to you, but also maybe the things that really, truly aren't going to work for you and, and your clients. You know, you want to have the, the pros and the cons going. But the other thing that I like to do to inspire creativity is I listen to stand up comedians comedians. You know, it seems a little bit weird, but they are frequently masters of creative word smithing. They're very masterful at taking an idea, very often a, a pain point, and turning it into something that makes it palatable and, and funny and digestible for the rest of us. And, you know, they communicate like we do in such a way that I think it's it's really um, a, a good way to start your mind down that creativity path. I like, um, you know, you can look on YouTube and I like, um, Ricky Gervais and Eddie Izzard and Tig Notaro, George Carlin is, you know, one of the greater, you know, philosophers. Sorry about the motorcycle just there. Um, and so I'll tell you another tried and true tool that I use, and it might seem a little simplistic, but it's collaboration. Um, I really, really like my clients and I'm in a luxurious position of, of being able to pick and choose the people that I want to work with. And I pick and choose the people that I like. Uh, and of course, I hope that they like me too, but I like my clients and I like 
working with them. I like talking to them and I like really, I like collaborating with them. Um, and when I work with a client and we address any creative process together, whether it's practice development or marketing and promotion, the result is always better. Now I'm happy to do the work on my own, on their, on their behalf, but it's always more fun and it's always better if I can work with someone. And you might find that to be true too. So find someone that you can collaborate with, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, and brainstorm with them. Bounce some ideas around, enjoy the, the give and the take, and collaborate. I think it does wonders, you know. Two brains always better than one. That's the cliche. So if you've got somebody who can, that you can, you know, mentally, creativ creatively play with, take advantage of that. Now I'll admit, sometimes I'm just not feeling it, for lack of a more technical term. You probably have experienced this too at some point in your life. Um, and I don't know how other people handle it, but when this happens to me and I simply cannot wait for the creativity bug to bite, I find that just getting started, I just do it. Um, just design something, write something, anything. Um, strategize something, but just get active. Just get your body moving, get your mind working. And that activity alone, more often than not, leads to something that's really creative. Now, it might start out to be maybe a bit fractured or a bit ugly at the beginning, but the longer I stick with it, the longer I work it, the better it gets, right? So it doesn't always start out but most first drafts get thrown away and, you know, we go through several drafts, but the longer I stick with it, the better the end result is. And then of course, the more often that I do that, the more often I open a, a document and I just have that blank white screen in front of me and I just start typing something, anything, get my fingers moving, get my mind moving, the easier it becomes, the more efficient and the more effective I am with my creative time and the requirements that are placed on me. So it's a skill like any other. You just have to, gosh, Nike, you just have to do it, right? They, they nailed it exactly right. Thank you, Nike. You just do it. Type anything, create anything, design anything, strategize anything, get started. It does get better. Um, now, sometimes, you know, creativity does just sort of um, strike like little bolts of lovely lightning, right? It just happens. You're walking the dog or you're washing the dishes or washing your car or, you know, you're talking to somebody about something totally unrelated and it just sparks and you just, ah, that's the, that's the thing I was looking for. That's what I need. That's what I'm, I'm going to do. When that happens, it's not always convenient um, because it's not planned, right? So you may be at somebody's wedding and the idea strikes and you can't just jump up and go turn on your laptop and get to work on it. But I will suggest that when that happens to you and it's at an inconvenient moment, don't think, oh, well, I'll just remember later because you possibly won't and you don't want to just let the brilliance go away. So document it in some way. Um, write it down, sketch it out on a napkin, um, tell your brilliant idea to, you know, the person sitting next to you, your friend or your family member, um, note it on your smartphone, open, open notes up and, you know, type it out on your smartphone, you know, work it through in some way, document it in some way so that when it's time and, and it's appropriate for you to revisit that idea, you've got it noted, you've got it sketched out, you've talked about it, you've somehow worked it through a bit enough that now when you have the appropriate time and space to be creative and take advantage of that little moment of brilliance, you've got it available to you. And lastly, of course, I mean, I can suggest that if you're not pressed for time, if you're not under a deadline, do something else. If you're really, truly blocked, you can do, you know, take an accountant's lunch, um, play, go for a walk, listen to music, um, teach your goldfish to floss, whatever works for you. Step away from the, the, the blank, the creativity blank, and sometimes just taking a break, just doing something different 
will make the gears start to click and you'll find your way back to the creative solution that you need to find. So in short, I think that we're all creative to many varying degrees and that once you've practiced putting together your ads, thinking about your practice development, um, thinking about the way that you are communicating with clients, thinking about the way that you're presenting your practice to your clients. All of those things do take, yes, a critical eye, but they also take creativity. And so I think that you've probably got it in you to do this. I think you've got it. I think you can do it. If you're struggling with it, of course, reach out to me, let me know. You can, of course, always hire someone to help you and give you that inspiration. Maybe it's not me, maybe you log on to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, Fiverr.com. You know, spend 50 bucks on a couple of different artists to create your YouTube videos, intro and outro, or you know, the, the, the ad that you're going to put in the bar journal, whatever it is, but I will suggest that we all have it in us. And sometimes if you can find somebody to just give you the jumping off place, you can, you can carry the rest of it and be wildly successful. So I have confidence in you. Thank you. Hi, Andrea Goldman. Nice to have you here. But listen, I want to say thank you so much for joining me for another Marketing Monday. Again, my name is Natalie Armstrong with Marketing Resolution. I hope you have a great week. If you've got a topic that you'd like me to cover in upcoming Marketing Mondays, be sure to let me know. Give me a note in the comments section or tell me that you like this one or you didn't like this or you want more like this. I'm happy always to create content that you want and you need and that resonates with you. So just let me know. Other than that, that's it. I am out. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your tea. Enjoy your coffee and be good humans. Take care.